Great discoveries are all about wonder, but there are many different kinds of wonder. There are wonders like the great wonders of the ancient world, but there are also wonders as in, I wonder what on earth this is. The discoveries you're about to see in this video all belong to the second category. Here are 12 fascinating archaeological discoveries that redefined history. Researchers at the University of Oxford in England have pulled off a scientific marvel by extracting ancient DNA from a 2,900-year-old clay brick. Now getting DNA from bones and teeth is hard enough. But clay? That's a first. The brick was found in the northwest palace of Neo-Assyrian king Ashurnasirpal II in modern-day Nimrod, northern Iraq. It was originally discovered back in 1949 by British archaeologist Max Malawan and his wife Agatha Christie. Uh, yes, that Agatha Christie, the mystery writer herself. The brick was made from mud and plant-based material collected from the Tigris riverbanks and was broken into pieces over the years, giving researchers a chance to sample its uncontaminated core. The DNA analysis revealed 34 different kinds of plants, including families like Brassicaceae, from which cabbage comes, and Ericaceae, which is the family that contains heather. This opens up a whole new avenue for understanding the biodiversity of ancient Mesopotamia and the materials used in construction at the time. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that working out how to extract DNA from clay might prove to be a revolutionary scientific breakthrough. Imagine being an eight-year-old playing in a sandbox and stumbling upon a relic that's older than your great-grandparents. That's exactly what happened to a young boy named Bjarn in Bremen in Germany. While most kids find seashells or perhaps a forgotten toy car, Bjarna found a 1,800-year-old Roman denarius. This silver coin, minted in the second century, weighs less than an ounce and is a testament to the inflationary times it was created in. Bjarna, not realizing the significance of his find, took it home before eventually handing it over to archaeologists. The coin's design is worn, but it still bears a pattern around the edge and a central figure. Interestingly, only two similar coins have ever been found in Bremen, a region that was never part of the Roman Empire. The coin's journey to the sandbox remains a mystery. It could have arrived through trade, been carried by a river, or even been a souvenir from a bygone era. Plans are afoot to exhibit this tiny treasure at the Fokker Museum in Bremen, so next time you're at the beach, maybe swap that bucket and spade for a metal detector. You never know what you might dig up. Next is a tale that would make any geologist's heart skip a beat. Imagine you're excavating a petrified forest in Lesbos, Greece, and you stumble upon a 64-foot petrified tree complete with roots, branches, and leaves. That's exactly what happened to Nikolaos Zoros, a professor of geology at the University of the Aegean, but the story doesn't end there. Weeks later, his team discovered 150 fossilized logs stacked atop each other nearby. This petrified forest, a UNESCO global geopark, is one of the largest in the world and dates back between 17 and 20 million years. It's a vivid snapshot of a time when volcanic eruptions buried much of Lesbos under lava and ash. The find is so extraordinary that it's being hailed as a breakthrough in the field of paleontology. It's not just a relic, it's a time capsule that offers invaluable insights into the ecosystems of a bygone era. We know the term unique find is used a lot in archaeology and paleontology, but sometimes the use is justified. This is one of those times. After so many years, it's truly incredible that the tree is still intact. Pompeii is the best-known archaeological site in the world. It's also the richest in terms of the number of discoveries that continue to be made there. In November 2021, Pompeii gave up one of its most fascinating finds in years when what's thought to be slave quarters were found in such good condition that it's almost like they were frozen in time when Mount Vesuvius erupted in the year 79. We have no doubt that it would have been unpleasant to live in these quarters, but there are indications that Roman slaves, or at least the Roman slaves in Pompeii, were kept in better conditions than you might imagine. They have beds, chamber pots, amphorae, and ceramic pitchers in their rooms. But given that at least three people probably lived in this room, they would have been extremely cramped. The room measures just 50 square feet. Also in the room was a shaft from a chariot, which implies that vehicle repairs were part of the enslaved people's job description. Horrifically, archaeologists think that one of the beds might have belonged to a child, 
The room, which is beneath the Savita Giuliana Villa, is currently being preserved. Next up is a story about cracking the code of an ancient puzzle. Archaeologists have successfully deciphered an ancient Kusana script, shedding light on a civilization that once ruled parts of modern-day India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. The script was found on a series of coins and inscriptions, and its decoding has opened up a new chapter in our understanding of the Kusana Empire, which flourished between the 1st and 4th centuries. The Kusanas were known for their religious tolerance and the blending of cultures, and they played a significant role in the spread of Buddhism. Deciphering the script was no small feat. It involved the collaboration of linguists, historians, and archaeologists. The breakthrough came when researchers realized that the script had similarities to other ancient languages, including Sanskrit and Pali. This is more than just an academic exercise. It's a key to unlocking the history and contributions of a civilization that has long been shrouded in mystery. The deciphered script is expected to reveal new insights into the empire's governance, religious practices, and even day-to-day -day life. It's a monumental achievement that underscores the importance of interdisciplinary collaboration in unearthing the secrets of the past. In the heart of Mexico City's historic center, archaeologists have unearthed a 1,500-year-old village that was once part of the Teotihuacan civilization. The discovery was made in the Tlatelolco area and includes water channels, floors, post holes, an artesian well, and a plethora of ceramics. Even human burials were found, complete with bowls typical of Teotihuacan production. This village wasn't just a simple settlement, it had a complex economic structure. They were not just subsistence farmers, fishers, and gatherers. They also produced ceramics, weapons, and various stone and shell artifacts. The village was likely part of Teotihuacan's extensive supply and trade network, and the excavation revealed remains from six different periods, including Mexico and early colonial occupations. It's a discovery that adds another layer to our understanding of Teotihuacan, a civilization that was the dominant cultural, economic, and political force in the region during its peak. This find is a treasure trove for historians and archaeologists alike, offering a glimpse into the daily life and economic activities of a village that once thrived under the influence of one of Mesoamerica's greatest civilizations. The Maya calendar is a subject that's been shrouded in mystery, and let's be honest, a fair bit of doomsday hype, am I right? But now, researchers have cracked open new secrets of this ancient timekeeping system, and there's not an apocalypse in sight. A recent study has delved into the intricate cycles and calculations of the Maya calendar, revealing its astonishing accuracy. The Maya were keen astronomers, and their calendar was deeply intertwined with celestial events. This new research shows that they even accounted for the slight wobble in the Earth's axis, a phenomenon that takes 26,000 years to complete. The study also dispels some long-standing myths, like the idea that the Maya predicted the end of the world in 2012. In reality, that date simply marked the end of one calendar cycle and the beginning of another, so there never was any need to stock up on canned goods. This research not only deepens our understanding of the Maya civilization, but also showcases the incredible sophistication of ancient cultures. It's a timely reminder that while we may have smartphones and space travel, our ancestors had some serious skills when it came to understanding the cosmos. Artificial intelligence is now everywhere, and it's recently been responsible for helping experts make major breakthroughs in their quest for knowledge of the past. Archaeologists have employed artificial intelligence to translate 5,000-year-old cuneiform tablets. These clay tablets, originating from ancient Mesopotamia, have long been a challenge for scholars. Cuneiform is one of the earliest known systems of writing, but it's also notoriously difficult to interpret. Enter AI, which has been trained to recognize the wedge-shaped marks and translate them into modern language. The project was a collaboration between computer scientists and archaeologists, and the results have been nothing short of groundbreaking. The AI was able to translate texts that had stumped human experts for years, revealing new insights into the social, economic, and religious aspects of ancient Mesopotamian life. This isn't just a win for archaeology, it's a testament to the incredible capabilities of artificial intelligence. As we continue to push the boundaries of what technology can do, 
It's fascinating to see how it can help us connect with the past in ways we never thought possible. It's like a digital handshake across millennia, and it's changing the game for historical research. One of the most surprising and mysterious recent discoveries in Israel is a 1,500-year-old pool and fountain near an ancient Christian site at Ein Hania Park. Now, this isn't your average backyard pool. It's part of a Byzantine-era complex that dates back to the 4th to 6th centuries AD. But here's where it gets juicy. Nobody has a clue what this pool was used for. Was it a place for the dead? Or perhaps the ancient equivalent of a luxury spa? The plot thickens. The pool's water flows into a rather fancy fountain, adorned with sculptures of nymphs no less. This is the first fountain of its kind to be discovered in Israel, and it's got archaeologists scratching their heads. To add another layer of mystery, the site is thought to be connected to the New Testament tale of an Ethiopian eunuch converted to Christianity by St. Philip the Evangelist. Whether it's a sacred baptismal pool or the ultimate royal chill-out zone, this discovery is only half-made. We've found its physical form, but we haven't yet worked out its symbolic meaning or its true purpose. The coral city of Lelo is a place like nowhere else on Earth. Situated on Lelo Island, a satellite of the larger island of Corsari in the Federated States of Micronesia, Lelo is a coral city that was a hub of tribal power from around 1250 until the mid-19th century. The city was built using biotic materials like sluractinian coral and prismatic basalt blocks, and it featured an intricate system of walls, terraces, roads, and compounds. At its zenith, Lelo sprawled over an area of about 3 million square feet and was home to around 1,500 people living in a complex hierarchical society. The architecture was a social indicator. The king and upper aristocracy lived in the center behind high basalt walls, while the lower aristocracy and commoners had more modest abodes. The city even had its own pyramidal burial structures called Saru. So, who built this marvel? Early theories suggested Spanish castaways or pirates, but the distinct architectural style suggests an independent culture, far predating any European contact. It's a place that challenges our understanding of Pacific Island cultures and leaves us pondering the ingenuity of ancient societies. Another archaeological discovery that you can literally dive into. A team of underwater archaeologists has unearthed an 8,000-year-old stilted village at the bottom of Lake Orid, which straddles the border between Macedonia and Albania. Somewhat terrifyingly, the village was guarded by an imposing collection of more than 100,000 wooden spikes. Putting the spikes aside for a moment, the age of the settlement makes it potentially the oldest stilted village ever discovered in Europe. The site was so well-preserved that researchers even found seeds, plants, and animal bones, giving us a glimpse into the village's diet, which likely included fishing and livestock rearing. The village is thought to have been home to between 200 and 500 people, and dates back to between 6,000 and 5,800 BCE. If these dates hold up, we're looking at the oldest lakeside community in Europe. Why build a village on stilts? Well, it's not just about flood prevention. The watery surroundings acted as a natural moat, making the settlement harder to attack. Plus, let's not forget the social prestige that comes with living over water. Our ancestors were clearly ahead of the curve when it came to innovative real estate. We have yet another story about the wonders of modern technology meeting the mysteries of the past. Researchers at Complutense University in Madrid have given us a fresh look at Paleolithic rock art in La Pasiega Cave, Cantabria, using digital stereoscopic recording techniques. Previously, some of these ancient artworks were thought to be incomplete, but this new method has revealed hidden details, including previously unidentified representations of horses, deer, and possibly aurochs. It turns out the artists didn't just abandon their work, they were actually incorporating the cave's natural rock formations into their art. This harmonious blend of human-made and natural elements adds depth and three-dimensionality to the scenes. Even the cave walls themselves might have served as creative inspiration. For instance, one horse image measuring about 18 by 12 inches uses the cave's natural fractures to outline its head and chest. It's like the ancient version of augmented reality where the lines between the physical and the artistic blur. This discovery shows that Paleolithic art is more than just drawings. It's an intricate interplay between the artists and their natural canvas.
Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon.